Good morning, guys. It is, oh God, what day is it? It is Monday, September 19th. It's day 20. We are so close to being done. We have 10 more days of the September series where I upload a video every single day. Ignore my face and hair, I just woke up. But I wanted to let you know that while I'm working, I'm gonna be listening to everyone in this room will someday be dead. Last month and a few months ago, I together, what's that word? Collectively got to page 84, 85. So now I'm almost in the middle of this book. I need to get back into it. So this is about a woman named Gilda, I believe. And she is a hypochondriac. She's kind of obsessed with death. And she's one of those cool, weird characters who are, are thinking all the thoughts and they are very honest and therefore everyone thinks they're weird, but really it's just like, bitch, we're all weird. We just don't all say it out loud. I love characters like that. I have such as a warm place in my heart for them. I don't know if that's a proper phrase. Anyway, Gilda starts working at a church. I think it's a Catholic church, despite being a lesbian atheist, you know, there might be some problems there. And there's this, I don't know if it's a side plot or part of the plot where a bunch of old people were mistreated by like a, an elderly nurse and they died. And the woman that was in Gilda's positions before at the church, I think was one of her victims. Now the problem is that Gilda was pretending to be this woman in an email to her friend just to make her feel better. So I don't know if Gilda's gonna start looking guilty. I don't think it's like a mystery thriller book. This is mostly literary fiction. It's very beautifully written and it's making me think so much, making me sad, making me laugh. I love those type of books. So yeah, I will probably finish that today. And then I have a couple mangas that I wanna read. I look like an 80s workout person. I have Death Note, uh, which I'm very excited about. I love this edition. You know what? I am totally blanking about what this is about, but I'm guessing it's gonna be like a little darker, literally. I also have Nana. I started it and it was really fun. I really like the main character. I'll get more into it if I end up picking this up today. But I am so excited to read Fruits Basket, mostly because Meredith over at Reading with Merv's channel is so down bad for this book and it gets me excited to read it. I thought this was gonna be a contemporary like romance for you know kids in Japan going to school, whatever, which I do love, but this has the added intrigue of this family turning into the Japanese zodiac, the Chinese zodiac. So yeah, it's just, it sounds like such a cool setup. Very excited to get to that today. I'm talking so fast because I have to get to back to work. So um, I'll see you soon. Editing Allie here. I um, underestimated how long it would take to read this. So no, <laughs> I don't read these two in this video, but I will be reading them soon. finished with work and I finished this book. I thought it was so good. Uh, oof. I feel like this really encapsulates when you're depressed, how you have zero motivation to do anything and how it really just zaps you. But it also just describes certain invasive thoughts that are like compulsory. And I feel like I haven't, I've read a few books that give me this feeling, but <laughs> Right now, all I can think about is this one and how uh, it's just beautiful because it's sad, it's funny, it's happy, it's hopeful, but yeah. I feel like I could read this over and over again. I'm giving it four and a half stars, probably not a five star just because I did stop and go. I read half of this over a month ago, actually in total many, many months ago. So it just feels a little broken up, but I bet when I reread it, I'll give it a five star. I love it. I'm so glad I read it. It's something that I'll probably talk about when I'm doing like my final, the September series video, where I'm like thinking about all the lessons I've learned in this. But definitely one of them is if I think I'm gonna like a book, just read the damn book because if I end up really loving it, I'll feel closer to it having read it like all in one chunk. I don't know, that's just me. But now it's manga time. I think I'm gonna start with fruit bats because, did I just call it fruit bats? What? I'm talking to my camera. Oh. I feel like there's gonna be a little, a little romance on here and I just, I kind of want that sort of crush feeling. But also I'm very curious about how they're gonna put the Zodiac into this. And now I wanna do like 
research on Chinese Zodiac, but maybe I should wait till I start the book. I am planning to count the pages for this in my stats for the day. For those of you that are new, I do a page count and a book count for, for the end of the day during this September series. I feel weird doing that because this is like 390 pages or something and I know it's not gonna take me as long as it would a real book. So I don't know why this continues to make me feel guilty, but I'm gonna do it. There, I said it. Anyway, I'm gonna start this. The first, I guess, little sentence in here is, let's get the party started. So let's get it started indeed. Also, if I end up hating this, I think Meredith might actually kill me. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm 25% through this. I'm on page like 98 or something and I'm loving it so far. This is about a girl named Toru Honda and she's living in a tent right now on the property of this Soma family. There are two guys there and they let her stay in the house. One of them is her classmate. And then a third one literally falls in through the roof. Toru falls onto him and he turns into a cat. So yeah, this whole Somu, so Soma family turns into the animals of the Zodiac, plus the cat. And then of course, all of these people are supposed to be attractive and young. So it's like, who are they all gonna end up with? <laughs> so there is that YA romance feeling, but mixed with the cutest animals. There's a cat, there's a dog, there's a rat. Look how cute they are. And it's funny cause I read the description the other day and it says when embraced by the opposite sex they turn into the animals of the chinese zodiac and i thought embrace meant like doing the hanky panky but it literally means just like putting your arms around them they are at risk of of this happening at school literally anywhere even by accident obviously there are some outdated things in here just talking about gender uh, which Meredith pointed out in her video. Keeping that in mind, this is still so fun. The boys that are turning into these animals, they have the personalities kind of of the animals. So the dog boy is very friendly and he laughs a lot. The rat boy, actually, he kind of acts like a cat too. And then the cat boy, Ka Kayo, Kyo, he's got this like very unfriendly demeanor at first, but I feel like, <gasps> our main character is gonna win him over and they're all just gonna be like one big happy family. Having so much fun with this. Some thoughts I've had so far. First of all, I'm new to manga, manga. Oh my God, I can't even say it right. And so reading Japanese names, first of all, you have to remember both the first name and the last name because they're both used. And then sometimes they're used by themselves, but sometimes they have this, I guess it's like a familiarity sort of attachment that they put on the name and it could be put on the last name or the first name. So it can be very confusing, especially because the three boys in this house, they all have the same last name, but people will say Somakun. So it's like, which one are you talking about? Also with the couple of mangas that I have read, they all have different styles, obviously an artistic style, but they all have different ways of reading it. So some of them have panels going down and it's very, you kind of get used to which order you read things in. But then like this book has differences in like the last manga I read. So I'm, I'm like, wait, 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 where am I on the page? Also, I got kind of confused at one point because there have been a couple scene changes and I couldn't tell if they were flashbacks or what, because it, it was just randomly go to a scene and then immediately go back to another scene. And then there was another time this happened, but I feel like it was a, a preview of what, what was gonna happen in the next chapter, it, but it was just so randomly put in there and it didn't say anything. So I'm just getting very used to this particular style, um, but I am having so much fun. Also, like our main character, I was born in the year of the dog, 1994. So let me know down below what your Chinese zodiac sign is because I love zodiac shit. Also, for those curious, I am a Gemini sun and a Taurus moon, but I don't know what my rising is because I don't know what time I was born. So let me know your signs down below. Okay, I'm gonna come back at the 50% mark unless I have something lovely and excitable or confusing to add. Oh, I forgot to say, I think my favorite character, we haven't seen much of her, but who is it? Hannah or Hannah Jima? I have no idea. This girl, I feel like she's gonna she's gonna be more important later on. Or at least I hope so, because I like her sort of mind reading or witchy vibes. I'm loving it. 
Okay guys, I'm halfway through. <laughs> I've become a fangirl, okay? I just squealed like a little piggy. Maybe I'm the year of the boar. Also, it's taken me way longer to read this than I thought it would, so I hope I can get to Death Note tonight. So at the point where I was just squealing, um, Toro was only staying at their house temporarily, and so she went back to her grandfather's house and she was just like, <sighs> she was concerned about them having breakfast like without her because they don't seem to be able to feed themselves, which, you know, same. And first of all, that was when the squeals started because I am such a simp for literally any character that can cook. But just like thinking about them as a little family and then they just showed up at her house and literally just were like, mm, you're coming home. The found family, I just, I will always just be such a fangirl for, for. It is giving me a little bit of the Raven Boys vibe just because there's this supernatural element, but also she's like blue with these boys and oof. Okay, I'm gonna read the rest of it. I don't know if I should come in and tell you what's going on just cause like, if you haven't read this book, I don't wanna spoil anything. So no more plot points that I'm gonna tell you about, but I'll come back to you when I finish this. Also, I feel like Yuki is somehow her mom, maybe? I don't know, people keep comparing them or they've compared them a couple times. But also, I don't know if it's just cause this is old, but people keep saying that Yuki is like a girly man or a, I don't know if that's a boy or a girl. And so I don't know if they're being rude or if maybe it is her mom pretending to be a boy. I don't know. Maybe Yuki's trans, but given the fact that they really emphasize like male and female, I'm not sure. I hope maybe there's a trans character in here. That'd be awesome. One more side note, I just asked my husband what animal I'd turn into if I turned into an animal. And he said a baby gazelle <gasps> because I run around a lot. I'm very hyper. And then I told him he'd be like a hawk because I feel like hawks are very smart, but also kind of sexy in a mean way. Like, wait, that came out wrong. The hawk is the alpha man of the bird species. So I'm gonna shut up, okay? Guys, I finished fruit baskets. Um, I love it. I love this. So far, this is my favorite manga I've read. I definitely want to continue though. Uh, I'm not going to buy them all at once because these editions are actually kind of expensive, but I will slowly be collecting them all. Honestly, every time one of them said home, <laughs> I lost it. I just love the found family aspect. I loved all of the characters. Although by the end, I was getting a couple of them confused. I feel like I really like when a new character is introduced because I want to figure out which zodiac sign they are. It's like kind of a fun little mystery. I like this weird romantic feeling that I get from this book, even though there's not really any real romance in it, at least not in this one. But I feel like even if there isn't, there is this kind of like homey, I love it. Yes, Meredith, if you're watching, thank you so much for recommending this because it was great. And if y'all are new to manga, I suggest this because it has a fantasy element to it or maybe a mythological, is Zodiac mythological? But it also has this like found family contemporary feeling to it. It's like a perfect mix of the two. I absolutely loved reading this, so much fun. Um, that being said, it took me way longer than I thought it was gonna take to read this. I don't know why, I didn't assume that. This is a chunker. So yeah, I will not be getting to Death Note or Nana today. Um, maybe tomorrow, but I did have something else planned. Why did I just lie? I have I have nothing planned for tomorrow, but I don't want to like pigeonhole myself into reading it. But anyway, what a great reading day. Um, let me go over the stats. So I read 158 pages of Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. And then Fruit Baskets, though I still feel guilty for adding it to it, even though it took me a long time, I'm gonna shut up about it, okay? This was 396 pages, so, so total I read, for today I read 554 pages, and then total for the September series is 4,754. And guess what guys? We met and surpassed my goal of reading 14 books because now, which you can clearly see here, I've read 15 books this month so far. <laughs> And we still have like 10 days to go or maybe nine now. All right, I'm gonna go watch House of Dragon with my husband and then edit this video, but I will see you tomorrow.